Hey guys, what's going on? Before we get into this video, I wanted to talk about something really quickly here. You know, I did this podcast because I wanted to provide some community information. And I think that this video is going to prove that this is what I'm trying to do. Have you guys ever taken a look at your water bill and noticed that there's an SJRA fee? And that fee is about, I don't know, half your water bill, maybe 40%. What if I told you that that SJRA fee doesn't need to be there? What if I told you that it shouldn't be there? What if I told you you don't get anything for that fee at all? The water company is not buying water from them. A lot of stuff isn't happening that's supposed to be happening. But I'll tell you what, I found out what's going on with that SJRA fee. We're going to lay it all out in this next video. And this is my interview with Simon Cicada of quad vest check it out quiet on set picture is up all right roll sound rolling roll cameras cams rolling and three two hey everybody what's going on and welcome to hank's think tank i got an important topic for you guys today this is something that came up about a month ago and I've been doing a lot of research trying to figure this thing out. And fortunately, I got the right guy in here who can help to lay this thing out and get everybody to understand it. But it's something that I think is going to do two things. It's going to enlighten you, number one. And number two, it might make you a little mad. So we're going to talk about it, try to line it all out. In addition to that, I'm going to put some links in the description of the video. And so if you guys want to do your own research, you can do that. You can also get in touch with... Uh, your utility uh, company and talk with them and I'm sure they'll be able to give you some additional information. Anyway, today I've got Simon Cicada in. He is the president and CEO of a company called QuadVest and QuadVest is a private utility company. They're actually a water company and they've been battling with the SJRA now for quite some time. It's the San Jacinto River Authority and we're going to get into the reasons why and what's going on but before I do that, I just wanted to welcome you aboard. Welcome aboard there, Simon. How are you? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you with us. So, you know, this the topic of, of this, this water tax or whatever you want to call it uh, came up about a month ago. And I got interested and I was able to reach out to the right people and, and we got connected. And I'm glad you're able to take some time and, and come visit with us today. So... But I guess before we start, let's talk about the two different types of water that can be gotten okay. uh, for a utility company. There's surface water and there's groundwater. Right. What are the differences in those? Because they sound the same to me. Okay. You know? So um, surface water is, is you know, what, what we see in lakes and streams and rivers, okay, okay. on the surface. Um, one, one key aspect of surface water in Texas is surface water is owned by the state of Texas. All right. Okay. Um, now... Different types of entities can purchase that water and use that water for all types of things, and they do um, all over Texas. But they have to they have to go to the state of Texas and get it. Versus groundwater, groundwater is in aquifers underneath us. Um, we have several different aquifers deep below us. Um, we have primarily the Gulf Coast Aquifer, and then something called the Catahoula, which is even deeper than that. And so, in Texas, groundwater is owned by the landowner and so if you own land in texas you own the water beneath you really just like the dirt that. yeah okay. just like the dirt and oil and gas and minerals and hay and cotton mm -hmm. it's yours you okay. own it it's private property wow okay and that's the groundwater correct that's the groundwater and so most public utility companies at least out in these parts get their water from groundwater that's right in right? montgomery county you know, I'm going to say 80%, maybe 90% of us get our water from wells drilled into the aquifers and, you know, pumped out of the ground into our tanks and through the pipes and into the homes. Okay. And that's kind of an endless supply. Yeah. In this area, it is it is endless for okay. sure. And I guess it's pretty clean to start out with. Yeah. You know, some areas, you know, have an iron or you've, you've seen like discoloration sometimes in water, but it's all, um, let's say all, it's it's. It's very high quality water in this area. Okay. And that's just due to the land conditions, I guess. It helps to filter it out. We're lucky. Um, you know, we have we have 
high producing aquifers. There was an article written several years ago that called us the Saudi Arabia of water. Makes uh, sense. I don't know if it's true or not, but we have a lot of water. Um, and yeah, it's, it's good, clean drinking water. Just about everywhere you go, you poke a hole in the ground in Montgomery County and you get clean drinking water. You may have to treat it with chlorine, but right. that's, that's usually about it. Okay. And so surface water. Now, how long have utility companies been using surface water to provide to their customers? In, in Montgomery County, um, not very long. Um, probably started back in 2015 and 2016. So really recent then? Very recent. Okay. Very recent. And so it was the San Jacinto River Authority that built a plant to capture the surface water, treat it, and put it out. That's correct? right. Okay. That's right. And so... And I'm, I, what I'm trying to do is get to the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District. So when, when I hear the word district, the first thing that comes into my mind is a taxing authority. Right. So is the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District a taxing authority? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And do they tax all the citizens in Montgomery County? Well, they tax water. Um, they, they, okay. They have, I say tax, um, they charge permitting fees. So, you know, I may have to read retract that a little bit uh do they have taxing authority by the legislature maybe not they have the authority to regulate the groundwater through permit fees i think is a better way to okay. say it and th those permit fees they don't go to the end user they go to the utility companies correct um yeah you know so they may charge you know four hundred dollars for a permit and then they charge right now like eight dollars or sorry eight cents per thousand mm -hmm. to pump water Okay. And so um, they charge the, the water companies that. The water companies pass that on to the end user. Okay. Okay. And we collect that from the end user and we remit that over to the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District. Okay. But that's not a lot of money. Yeah. That's, eight cents per thousand gallons. Yeah. If you use uh, 10,000 gallons, right? 80 cents. 80 cents. Yeah. yeah. So that's nothing. Nothing. Okay. But I've noticed when I look at my bill here in Splendor, Texas, that about half of it, maybe a little less, I'd say 40%, yeah. goes to the San Jacinto River Authority. That's right. Now, why would they be getting money from me? Yeah. that's what, If we own the water that's underneath us, and let's just say the, the city of Splendor owns the water that they're pumping out that's right. and providing to us, then why do we have to pay the San Jacinto River Authority? Yeah, this is where it gets very complicated. Um, okay. Um, the short answer is the San Jacinto River Authority taxes um i call it a tax they call it a fee but to me not to me the the definition of a tax is mm -hmm. if you get something you get no service for it it's a tax if you get something a toll road or a permit or a license right it can be called a fee mm -hmm. but if you don't get something for it it's a tax so there is a tax on all of the groundwater that we pump in montgomery county SGRA taxes the water providers. Water providers, same thing as Lone Star. We pass it on to the citizens. We collect it. We remit that over to the San Jacinto River Authority, and we get nothing for it. Zero. Not one single drop of water. So they don't provide water, but they still have the ability to charge us for it. They provide water to the woodlands. So, But that's surface water, not groundwater. They do both in the woodlands. Do they? Okay. They do. So... So one of the reasons why I believe the SJRA was a big promoter of this groundwater to surface water conversion mm -hmm. was because they own all the water wells in the woodlands and they own all the groundwater also. And so they wanted to get the woodlands onto surface water, reduce their groundwater pumpage, um, but they didn't want to pay for it all by themselves, right? And they didn't want to... Okay it was going to be too much for just the citizens of the woodlands to pay for. Mm -hmm. And so they, this is where they created this, this program where um, Lone Star passed some rules. Um, it forced everyone into these SJRA contracts. And so it made it more affordable for the woodlands, but everyone else in Montgomery County is essentially subsidizing the water in the woodlands. Okay. So so the Woodlands residents don't have real high water bills, but it's um, the surrounding communities that do. Yeah, I would. I will tell you they they have. They pay similar fees, um, but 
but their water bills would be, I'm going to say, five times as much or ten times as much mm-hmm. if if the SJRA weren't collecting taxes from everyone else. And where do those taxes go? They go to pay for the water plant that the SJRA built and the pipelines Okay. to the woodlands. Mm-hmm. And so if you were to take away all that tax that everyone else in Montgomery County pays, mm-hmm. And you saddle the people of the woodlands with that infrastructure cost, five hundred fifty million dollars. Their water rates would be, you know, out of this yeah, world. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to pay it. They couldn't pay it. Right. So, what's the answer to that? It's, that's why the SJRA came up with this plan. Let's get everyone to pay a little bit, mm-hmm. so their customers don't have to pay a lot. And I can almost kind of see that. Yeah. You know, in a way that. that kind of makes sense but is it fair no it isn't yeah it's what was done in harris county so the people that did this uh copied what was done in harris county and they Mm -hmm. brought it up to montgomery county uh but they missed some steps made a lot of mistakes um and and i think most of us most water providers will tell you we don't need it Mm -hmm. we just don't need it here maybe we'll need it in 50 years i don't i don't know right Um, but but it was unnecessary it was probably done uh, it was done for two reasons. It was done uh, to help their customers not get outrageous water bills. And it was also done to control water in Montgomery County because mm-hmm. they have a stranglehold on all of our water in Montgomery County. Sure, because the dollars are behind it. Sure. Yeah, and that's what it all boils down to. Right. So, so let me try to wrap this up then. So if there wasn't a surface water plant, in Conroe that fed the wood, the woodlands, correct? Yeah. It, it, other, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't receive that additional tax. Right. Right. If that plant, if you wipe away $550 million worth of, mm-hmm. you know, water plant and pipelines, tax goes away. But did the woodlands have the, the ability to pump groundwater before that? Yes. And, so and why couldn't they go back to that? Because now they have this, this, they sold bonds to pay this debt off. Mm-hmm. And so what's going to happen to those bonds? Right. Well, the bonds are going to be paid off. That's all there's to <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've never heard of bonds not being paid off before. So, yeah. I mean, those this bonds is where it gets taken... very interesting. Right. Um, it's a shell game, it sounds like. It is. It is very much of a shell game. And I think the the River Authority knows they've, they've been had and they've made a bunch of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, these bonds are insured, right? So great. Could be you could stick an insurance company with it. Um, it could affect bond ratings of the county and maybe Texas. I doubt it. You know, I think that's maybe a little bit of a red herring. But um, yeah, now you've got you've got a five hundred fifty million dollars worth of bond debt out there. Four hundred million of it was bought by Texas Water Development Board. Mm-hmm essentially the state of Texas. Right. And about $150 million was bought by the public, you know, T. Rowe Price or whatever bond fund kind mm-hmm. of thing. And so there's a chance. There's a chance there's a bond default coming. And I don't know what, if anybody knows what that means yet. Uh, I certainly don't. Yeah, I don't either. It's, it's, um, and, that, and that would depend upon litigation, correct? Yes, yeah. There's a lot of litigation behind this. And um, certainly the governor's office and the lieutenant governor's office and the politicians are very aware of this. Mm-hmm. Um, they're watching this very closely, mostly because of the bond issue. Doesn't mean they're not sympathetic to us. They are. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, right, there's a lot of people worried about this, these bonds. Right. And so, you know, it almost makes me wonder because if the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District had its board members appointed by the San Jacinto River Authority, that just seems like another self-interest group. Yeah. Uh, It's it's self-serving big time. And so how can the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District come up with any rules or anything else that are unbiased in that particular case? And so you did have litigation that, that turned those board members from appointed members to elected officials, correct? Well, 
that that was we we went to the legislature and we got those rules changed. Okay, um, and that was in 2019. That changed in uh, I'm going to say 20, uh, maybe 2015. 2015. Yes, okay. yes. Um, and and so it, it's even worse than you think at Lone Star, because the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District was created uh, in 2001. And it was created with an exemption to conflicts of interest. Okay. Now. That sounds, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really fishy, right? <laughs> There's 100 sounds, groundwater districts Sounds in like Texas. the mob is involved with it. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. it really does. And, 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 you know, when and people in Montgomery County voted in the Lone Star Groundwater District, right? Mm-hmm. How many people read the? The fine print in the bill, right. right? You know, and voter education's tough. That's right. It's, it is yeah, hard. And tough. and honestly, I didn't know about it. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't go back and read all the details in the bill. But right. Um, you know, when you think about government agencies, um, I don't care if you're a city hall or a mud district, you cannot be exempt from conflicts of interest. Right. Now, the reason they did this is because it was created with appointed board members. San Jacinto River Authority was appointed to the board. They got to name whoever they wanted to sit on the board. Woodlands Joint Powers, which is now it's Woodlands Water, but they also got to name someone to sit on the board. Okay. And so I think even back then, even 20 years ago, when this board was created, they they already believed and knew that this board was eventually going to get to passing rules to force a conversion from groundwater to surface water. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any other reason why a, a groundwater district needs to be exempt from conflicts of interest laws of the state of Texas when they have appointed board members sitting on there. That's the only reason that yeah. we've ever come up with. So where does a woodland stand with all this? Well, it you know, it sounds to me like they would they would be in a position where they don't want anything to change because it's going to adversely affect them no matter what happens. It sounds like you know I think they're victims too. They are. Um, I think most people that understand this in the Woodlands will tell you it shouldn't have happened, but we don't want our water bills to go to fifteen dollars per thousand. Right, but right? just between us girls, the Woodlands got the money. Yeah, I mean they do. Right. When you look at places like Splendora versus the Woodlands, the Woodlands has the money. Yeah. And we shouldn't have to pay it. Yeah, I and think that's the part that gets my blood boiling. Yeah, you, know? well, you talk about, um, um, you know reverse redistribution this mm-hmm. is reverse redistribution right right exactly. you're taking money from um you know there's certainly wealthy places outside of the woodlands mm-hmm. but there's a lot of uh, poor places in montgomery county outside of the woodlands you're taking money from those people right you're taxing their water and you're shipping it over to pay for infrastructure for the woodlands and and it's it's yeah. wrong it's just wrong it is wrong. And, you know, I recently uh, poured over uh, the Woodlands Township budget, actually, um, 168 pages, I believe. Okay. And this was, um, I was doing some research on another project. And so I know how much money they have, and I know what they put their money toward. And it would be nice if we had that same ability out here. Sure. And I don't see how we're going to be in a position to do that as long as we're getting murdered on stuff like this. No, I, it, it's, you know? yeah. So what do we need to do to fix it? I mean, that's... You know, and everybody's going to ask me the same question. They're right. going to go, okay, Hank, you know, we're getting screwed. What do we do to fix it? You know, how can we fix it? Yeah. You know, we've, we've come a long ways. Um, started in 2015 when we really dug in. Um, you know, we, we have changed the Lone Star Board from a, an appointed board to an elected board. Okay. And so now all seven members of, of Lone Star are now elected. Mm-hmm. And there will be another election here in uh, November. November. Correct. And so... It is critical that people um, vote for the people that agree to support private property rights. You know, you can you can frame it a bunch of different ways, right? Either, That's what it all boils back. Yeah, down it's to a, it's support of private property rights, um, and SJRA does not respect that, and they don't support it. Um, and if you can stick with that theme, those that are pro private property rights are typically anti SJRA. Right. So then you don't have to worry about. Lone Star going back and changing rules back to the old way, right? Because we, if that were to happen, then we got to go fight this mess again, right? And yeah, and this could drag out for the next fifty years, right? That's right. Yeah. So who's the oversight for the SJRA? There's got there's got to be some oversight. For there's that. nobody, really. 
That's my opinion. Another organization without oversight. It's interesting. They have an a they have an appointed board uh, by the governor. Mm-hmm. Um, we have complained about that, but I don't think the governor's given up executive privilege. Um, so that's going to stay the way it is. But does he have skin in the game down here? No. Nope. No. Nope. Then I don't see the point. I know. I agree. Um, you know. They have historically just kind of drank the Kool-Aid from the lawyers and the consultants and the general managers that right. keep doing what you're doing. Um, there's no oversight from a um, like a public utility commission. So private utilities uh, have um, have regulatory oversight mm-hmm. um, or uh, a city or a MUD. You may not have regulatory oversight, but councils elected or the MUD right. boards elected. SGRA has neither. Neither really? of those. So theoretically, they can do what they want. You know, they're pretty close to being able to do what they want. They have wow. done what they want. Wow. Now, we do have Sunset Review coming up. And that's every 10 years? Every 10 years. Okay. That's right. Um, and well, act- Let's explain a little bit about what a Sunset Review is. Okay. So in Texas, um, almost all state agencies, government agencies, go in front of Sunset Review and that just means that and every 10 years is, is about the pace. Uh, and that just means that the legislators and the, the Sunset Committee staff review um, that agency. And they just decide whether or not that agency is doing what they're supposed to be doing, what they were designed to do. They can sunset them, meaning they go away. Um, or they can change their legislation to, to make them more efficient, um, to better serve the 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 reason they were created in the first place, mm-hmm. right? So uh, a few years ago, uh, river authorities in Texas have never come under sunset review up until maybe four or six years ago. Okay. And so SGRA is not the only bad behavior in the river authority gang. So um, Sounds like it. Yeah. So the, river, so, so the legislature decided we're going to put all river authorities under sunset review. Now, you can't sunset a river authority meaning you can't make them go away right who's going to run the dam below the lake and yeah that and not only that but a lot of that has to do with the bonds and there's bonds yeah, issues yeah, they still have bonds out so, so yeah. yeah so so it's really about the very little oversight that we have is probably only through sunset wow now, i'm surprised i don't have to answer to the public utility commission no that's crazy yep it is it really is um now there's a deadline coming up. September 1st is the deadline to have written comments into Sunset related to the San Jacinto River Authority. Okay. Um, and, and it really it just, it, you know, make your voice heard. If you're okay. happy with them, tell them you're happy with them. If and I'll not, put a link in the description for okay. that, too. So people who are watching, if they want to complain, then they can do that. Right. I'll be one of them, that's for sure. Okay. So, yeah, it's... You can't take a lot of money from me before I start getting angry <laughs> about it because I just don't have a whole lot. Well, and, uh, and, and then when you understand why it's being taken, right? You look at your water bill and you see things on your water bill that you don't understand. And mm-hmm. a lot of water providers put SJRA fee and it's right. about half your water bill. What's it for? Well, and see, I was always under the impression that was for purification or for, for compliance or something like that. And that they were the oversight for the, the utility company that we pay. Right. And I thought, well, okay, that's good. I, I can dig that. that. Or that they buy their water from them. Or so, I, I thought it was something. Yeah. I didn't think it was just somebody that gets money that doesn't do anything or provide anything. And that when you really look at the big picture of it all, they're just funding someone else's infrastructure. It's all they're funding. It's all we're paying I'm not for. happy about that at all. Yeah. You know? Most people aren't. So the good thing is, is we've decided to host a public forum about this issue. We're going to have you on as our keynote speaker. All right. It's going to be at the community center or the community room. I'm sorry, at Randall Reed. Um, And that's going to be September the 20th at 6 p.m., correct? I think so. 6 p.m. So, guys, I'm going to be putting out an invite on that. I'll be providing a whole lot of information. Uh, We're going to have several other speakers there. We're going to lay this whole thing out. And as a community, we're going to see if we can cohesively try to figure out the best method by which we can undo a really bad situation before 50 years has gone by and our grandkids are faced with the same thing. So 
You know, I talk about this kind of thing all the time on this channel, and that's why it's so important for you to be educated voters, to take the time to look in, and get into the individuals who are running for certain positions. Got to know who they are, got to know what they stand for, or you end up with things like this. So, uh, Simon, I appreciate you coming on, and I, I want to talk a little bit more about this as well, okay. but I want to save some of it for that public forum. Okay. Um, and, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a few other individuals on, and we're going to get into the subject a little bit more from from different sides and see if we can kind of lay it out a little bit better and get you to understand. But if you do have any questions, let me know. Um, just write me in the comments. I'll be ready to answer. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Been a while since we did a public thing, so I'm looking forward to that. Election season's coming up, so you know we're going to have a boatload of candidates in here. So uh, get, get educated on who to vote for. And until that time, I'm Hank Batten. This is Hank's Think Tank, and I guess we're out.